Hey guys, it's Ryan with My Listing Club. Today I wanted to show you an option for designing your My Listing dashboard using nothing more than Elementor Pro and some CSS. I uh, recently posted about this uh, probably a couple days ago in our Facebook group and uh, promised a guide or a video for this. So without further ado, here is the video. Um, for those that don't know, we have a YouTube channel and on the website, you can also access the video tutorials under, under uh, resources. So once this video gets published, you'll be able to find it here on the website. And it should be the first video in line. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So this is the end goal. This is the end result. So what we have here looking at the top is we've hidden the site-wide shouldn't say sorry, not the site-wide, but the WooCommerce endpoint header that we created. Um, so we have a custom header for WooCommerce endpoints, and we have a custom header for listings and a custom header for just the regular site pages. Um, but in this particular example, just to keep the clutter down and keep things simplified, uh, I wanted to show an example of hiding the header completely and uh, styling the dashboard a bit. Okay, so that's what we have here. Um, this is the header on uh, another, like an endpoint page, which is obviously the cart. Um, so we see a, a really simplified design here, just so people can focus on what's in their cart. And I can't even scroll down because the footer has been taken out. That's a, this is a separate topic altogether, but. The point here is just to keep everything clean and simple so they can focus on the checkout process. Uh, and the same, the same if we go to checkout, I've got nothing in there. So uh, it, it would look just like this page for the most part. Um, th this is the, this is looking at a single product. So this, this is our WooCommerce header up here with the black background. Uh, if we look at the, the actual website website, it gets the same white background, you know, the simple look. So, so same as, as you see there in the cart and then the other endpoints like single product pages get this black background. Okay. Um, so we'll go ahead and close these down. So what we want to do is we, before we had this one, this header applied here and just kind of created a stacked, redundant look and just didn't feel like the logo was needed on this or the menu to also be in your face on a separate line. So that's one of the goals is just to combine those, which you see here under this site menu. Okay, so let's reverse engineer how, how this was built. So we have a template. This is the Woo header I was talking to you about. This has the black background. This is our listings header. And this is our site-wide header. So um, what we wanted, these really don't apply to, they would by default apply to this, my account endpoint. But what we've done is you go into the actual my account page edit that, just the regular WordPress editor. And you change the template from default to elements or canvas. We'll go ahead and put this on the default. What Elementor canvas does is, is it hides the header and the footer for that page. So let's refresh here. So when we have the default template, this is what it looks like. You know, this is like the my listing out of the box. You can kind of see it's hidden underneath there because of the styling. So what we do then is we would use this WooCommerce header with the black background and we would assign that using display conditions. So let's just say we wanted to assign it. Let's just assign it to a page. Singular page. My account. So 
So let's refresh the screen. We should get the, so there we go. This is our, our uh, WooCommerce endpoint header. It doesn't look that bad, but on this page, like I said, we don't necessarily need the logo and whatnot in this menu up here to show. And also it's, you know, a slight performance boost. It doesn't have to load an image or this menu um, button over here. So a couple perks there. So we'll go ahead and take, take this back out of the display conditions. All right, so now we're back to this default look here. Okay, so we don't need to mess with the template anymore. We go back into the My Account page and we just put that back to Elementor Canvas. That's gonna go ahead and get rid of that header for us. Okay, so we've ran through how we get rid of the header. Cool. Um, now, how do we get, for example, this site menu? How are we gonna get back to the main navigation of the website? So that's how we create this site menu button right here. So really quickly, if you click on this, what this does is it calls up a pop-up, also created in Elementor Pro. This gets us back to our, our mega menu, our main navigation. Okay, to pull that off, we have another template. We have our mega menu template. Like I said, this is a pop-up. So if we edit the settings of the pop-up itself, go to the advanced tab, you're gonna see an open by selector option. What we are saying here with this command is basically anywhere that this anchor point is called in a URL, let's pop up this template here. Okay. And either in the video notes or maybe I'll write up a little mini guide for this. Uh, I'll include this. I'll try to include, I'll include, include this in the show notes, uh, video notes. So you guys have it, or you can also just reference the video. Um, so basically that's how we call it up. Now in our menu, we go to our, we want to switch to our WooCommerce menu. And oh, for anyone that's not familiar with this, let me pull up for uh, my listing site again, here. my listing club site. Be sure to check out under the guy under our guides, check out this post, it's our most popular post here. Build an online business using the My Listing theme. If you do a quick search in here for endpoint, it goes into like this in further detail about how to create a special WooCommerce menu and whatnot. So I won't go into all that here, but definitely check out this guide. Okay, so here we've created a custom WooCommerce menu. That gives us all of these endpoints here at the top that we see. So our first one here is site menu. That was created by grabbing, uh, using the short codes here in my listing to grab an icon. And here I just used, I think it was stream, grab this icon And I dropped it right here in front of the word site menu and put a space in between here. And as you see this in the URL line, we're calling that hashtag with other, you know, an anchor mega pop-up. Looking back at our pop-up here, we see we match that up anchor mega pop-up. So that's how we are calling this right here. And to expose that URL line, go under screen options when you have your menu pulled up. Uh, tick this box for link target. That will get you this box. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and close the menu. We're gonna close the short codes. We're gonna close the pop-up. We're gonna just go back to our dashboard. So that's it. We've, we've said in our menu, we wanna call the, our pop-up, which is our mega menu. Um, so let me clear this out. 
And when we click on site menu, bam, there it is. And you see up here in the URL line, it's calling that anchor point, the mega pop-up. So now we've got our navigation. So that's really it about as the functionality goes. Um, I'm not going to say it's easy because, you know, it took a while. It just seems easy when you watch the, the video, but they're, you know, getting to that point. It took some, some research and whatnot, um, but uh, let's put the final touches on this. And that's this design up here at the top. Um, so we're going to come over to our CSS and I highly recommend the code snippets plugin. It's a free plugin in the repository. Uh, it's just really awesome for toggling on and off uh, code snippets and testing them out. And you can even you know, do a search for them and whatnot. So tag them, organize them, pretty cool stuff. So if we look at, uh, don't, don't judge me on the uh, having multiple CSS files because when the site gets launched, they will all be combined into one. This is just for pre-launch testing purposes. But um, what we want to look at here is the WooCommerce endpoint design CSS package. So let's edit that. And somewhere in here, we have got the, there we go. It's right here. And I will document all of this, obviously. But, you know, an easy way to tell here is, you know, if we do an inspect on this, we see here that this caller is being called up custom. So if we do a search in this snippet for that value there, we, we kind of see where our, our design starts to happen. So it's pretty much in this. Yeah, I think it's that it's this batch right here. Like I said, I will document all of this because this this CSS package will be available to my listing club members. So, uh, you know, this will all be documented, but it's that batch right there that is, you know, this is the, the icon caller. Um, this is the icon caller right here. And icon caller there. So you can see it's that green color. So that's what's doing that. And yeah, and some other stuff. Transition, this is just slowing down the hover effect. So just kind of easing into that. That's it, really. Uh, like I said, I'll make all this available to you. Um, hope, hope some of you find it useful. I think it looks pretty cool. Anyway, just an option. All right, thanks, guys, and talk to you later.